just a bit of an addendum to what I was saying in my last video, <clears throat> which I recorded walking through the woods on a hot, hot day, reflecting upon various degenerate uh, rock stars who are, uh, if you can believe it, all uh, at least three or four years older than me. Um, I wanted to add something that I that I find interesting that I, I, I can't help but but note, and I haven't heard anybody else commenting on any of this stuff, note what I'm about to note uh, concerning Trent Reznor. Specifically, there's a couple things that really are strange, that really strike me as strange about Trent Reznor's, uh, the, the accusations about uh, uh, concerning him and his behavior. First of all, I will uh, go back uh, to the 90s and... and uh, discuss what Marilyn Manson claimed in uh, an autobiographical uh, book that he published in 1998, uh, where he recounted what he said was an incident where he and Reznor, uh, who, were, who, would, who were friends at the time and who had worked together, Reznor had produced uh, two of um, Manson's albums, I believe, uh, the, a time where they <clears throat> they uh, intentionally uh, um, added something to a woman's drink uh, to knock her out, to make her uh, pass out, and then they both um, violated her. It, it, not in not in the typical sort of way, but but in a in a way that's described uh, in in rather disgusting terms. Um, but they just just uh, you know, felt their way through her, her private, uh, the private parts of her body, and looked at things. And, and uh, Manson claims he set her pubic hair on fire. Um, so, at the time that this was written, um, Reznor claimed that it was not true, and in fact, this cre this uh, created a rift between the two of them, um, and. Uh, Later, when the this, this same passage was uh, was brought out <clears throat> because of what Manson is facing today with accusations against accusations of abuse against him, Reznor again denied it. And Reznor said, "We've been uh, we haven't been friends for 25 years. I stopped. Uh, you know, basically, he's a creep. Uh, I've I've uh, I've stopped uh, hanging out with him uh, at all." Well. Here, here, there's a couple things, things that's, that, that are striking to me about this. First of all, that I, and this, again, these are things I haven't heard anybody else say. First of all, this book was actually published. This book with this passage in it was actually published. If Reznor knew that it was not true and knew that he was being defamed and being portrayed as essentially a rapist... Uh, well, first of all, I don't know why charges weren't brought against uh, against both of them uh, for the information contained in the book, uh, given the confession, you know, given given that the confession is true and and, and Manson claimed that it was true, um, but but putting that aside, um, Reznor denied it at the time. Why did he not get an army of lawyers and sue the hell out of Manson? Why did he not demand that the book uh, be withdrawn from release, given that he was being defamed, that he, given that he was being shown to be um, a uh, essentially a, a rapist? Uh, why? Why did that not happen? Nobody has asked that question, much less answer, much less answered it. And 25 years later, the same question uh, still arises. You know, again, he says, when this passage from the book comes up, again, he says, uh, it's not true, and I vociferously deny it, and I hate Manson uh, with a passion. Um, but again, uh, he lets it stand. He lets it stand as a matter of public record. It's an autobiography that was probably read by millions of pe people. Why did he allow that to happen if it wasn't true? 
think about it. I mean, I, I maybe there's something, some, some answer that I, there's some answer to that question that I just don't have access to, uh, but uh, it seems really, really strange to me. If Reznor was some nobody who, you know, paying for a lawyer would be, uh, you know, a hassle, then, then um, I could understand it. But he's a rich rock star. He can sue the shit out of, out of anybody, he choo anybody uh, who defames him in any way. Why did he not see to it that this autobiography, which was read by millions of people, which portrayed him doing these these terrible things, why did he not uh, demand that this be withdrawn? Uh, okay. So that's one thing. Um, the second thing, actually, there's two other things. Okay, this number two. Reznor claimed that they had that that they had a falling out 25 years ago, uh, at around the time that he. I guess that the, around the time that this that this uh, autobiography was published and that he never uh, uh, associated with him again, but that isn't so. If you'll go back and uh, see, because I, I did some research myself, I looked this up. Um, I, I uh, uh, just just by ty typing in names and stuff, it wasn't that hard. There was a t uh, an occasion in 2020 where. Manson and Reznor teamed up. They played on stage together, and then they were interviewed together afterwards. And they were kind of taking shots at uh, other rock stars of the, of the time, like Michael Stipe and Limp Bizkit, and and and, uh, and so forth. Um, so they there. So even after you're telling me that even after this guy defamed you uh, in his autobiography. And made you out to be a rapist. You're still hanging out with him. You still go on stage with him. You're still being interviewed with him. That doesn't strike me as uh, uh, th that strikes me as lacking cred causing you to lack credibility, causing your word to lack credibility. All right, and finally, number three, getting it, uh, making it current again. Um, so what Courtney Love claimed was that she knew that Reznor and his band were uh, 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 sexually uh, assaulting uh, young girls, uh, young girls who, who were underage, who could not give consent. Um, girls as young as 12. This is what Love said in, uh, I said it was a tweet in my other video, but it was actually an Instagram uh, uh, entry that she, that she uh, left, that l later she deleted. But anyway, uh, and then... Uh, and then she apologized for uh, for making for for speaking uh, for, her her apology never never took back anything that she said in that tweet. Okay, um, she and she didn't mention anybody's names in in the apology and say I'm sorry, I'm sorry I lied about you, Trent Reznor. I know you didn't do these things that I accused you of doing. She didn't do that. She didn't say that. Okay. So the accusation still stands, I think, legally speaking. Again, I haven't heard anything from Reznor's camp uh, saying this is absolutely not true. They haven't, there, it hasn't been denied. Uh, and there hasn't been any uh, suit forthcoming. Now, if Reznor in the next few days denies it, and if he sues the shit out of Courtney Love for accusing him of child molestation, then I'll, I'll change my tune. But as long as that has, as long as, um, that, uh, uh, does not happen, which it has not happened yet, and you would think it would have happened by now, if it were to have, were to have happened, because what, what uh, advantage does he have to just sit on this and wait? Wait for it to blow over. I mean, why would you want to do that if you were being falsely accused? You wouldn't just sit and wait for something to blow over. Unless unless the, the charges were true, right? And you just, uh, it was just a PR move to not, uh, to not comment. And to just let the, let the whole thing sort of die out, hopefully. Which is what it seems like it is. That's that's which is what makes me suspect that <clears throat> what Love said was actually true. 
So that's my, uh, those are my thoughts about Trent Reznor and the accusations. And those, there's my, and I've given you my reasoning for my thoughts. Now let me know what you think if you care to. Uh, my name is Andy Nowicki. You can check out my work at altrightnovelist.com.